Hello, it is Joanne here, and I am with the most amazing Dr. Jerry Shaw. He is a doctor of chiropractic, but he has really practiced the whole body medicine. He's um, learned about and practiced Ayurvedic and Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine. And so he's really coming from the whole body healing. And what were you saying early? The body is is built to build itself and you're here to support it. Weren't you sharing that when you were describing kind of what you do for patients? The more you understand the body, the more you realize that the body is our best doctor. It, and what we do as practitioners is support the body's ability to balance itself. And you reference traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine, those branches, those modalities support and recognize the body's attempt to balance itself, Chinese medicine around the five elements, earth, water, air, fire, and ether, and of course, yin and yang, hot and cold, damp and, and dry, and all of these different uh, polarities, all attempting to balance in, in the mechanism of life. And Ayurvedic medicine takes a slightly different tact and recognizes the body's attributes and, and classifies them into what they call doshas, Vada, Pitta, and Kapha each have different qualities that include personality and, and body type and everything, but it's all about bringing the balance of those three doshas. So uh, allopathic medicine is about helping people achieve homeostasis, and that's when you go get the physical exam and they have this report, you know, blood test or other exam findings, and things are out of balance or they're within normal ranges. So it is all about the body being balanced. And our job is to use techniques to help the body to come back to that balanced place. So we're not doing anything other than supporting the body. So that's the key. Yeah. We could go into elaborate and deep conversations about this. Um, I find it all very fascinating. I've been on my holistic journey since 2011. You got started in the 1980s, so you are way ahead of me, and I appreciate your expertise here. Um, we want to share today about detoxifying, and so I, I have some questions for you, Dr. Jerry. Um, what actually is detoxing the body, and why is it important? Well, you have to realize that there are approved chemicals yes. that have slowly been added to our existence through industry, mm -hmm. through discoveries um, in all arenas, whether it's bu the building industry, the clothing industry, the, the telecommunications or, or whatever industry it is, or farming, ranching, all of that. There are chemicals that have been invented that supposedly made those industries uh, easier or more efficient, but in, to the tune of 80,000 approved chemicals. There's 80,000 plus approved chemicals in our environment that we did not, our ancestors did not deal with even a hundred years plus ago. Mm. So those chemicals interfere and interrupt biological interactions in our body they actually make it harder for our bodies to achieve balance. So that's why detoxification is important. And what is detoxification? Well, the body tends to process these toxins and get rid of them through various mechanisms, chemically inside the body. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it, it requires activation of genes. Sometimes it requires certain nutrients that play off of that or off of those interactions. And so because we tend to be stressed, sometimes those mechanisms aren't that effective. So what happens is the body will store toxins and it sends, sends these store signals because it's trying to keep our organs protected. The last place the body wants to have toxins is affecting the organs, the, the liver, the kidneys, the heart, the brain. So the body sends signals, we have to store these toxins. Where does it store them? Mostly in fat cells. Mm -hmm. And that's why we see, uh, in a large extent, this literal epidemic of overweight weight and obesity. And when people try to lose weight, then all of a sudden, you know, some of those fat cells start releasing 
those toxins because they're starting to break down those fat cells or the fat has to be used as energy or something like that. So then the body freaks out even more and starts sending more store signals. So the person goes off of their diet or whatever they're doing. And all of a sudden they gain even more weight back because they're, they're being told on a cellular level, store, expand the fat cell, take in more toxins. We've got to protect this person. So it's a big issue. And there are two phases to detox. Okay. One is getting the toxin out of the cell into the blood. Mm. And that's difficult to do because you have to override the store signaling. So now it's in the blood. That's phase one. Phase two is activating, which happens naturally in a healthy body, but sometimes you have to assist it because not everybody's healthy. So the second phase is activating the organs of detoxification which include the liver mm -hmm. the kidneys the lungs the bowel and the skin mm -hmm. all of those need to be activated because once the toxins come out into the blood now the real job is to get it outside the body so it doesn't go back into the cells so that's detoxification why it's important is i already covered that it interrupts <laughs> almost every process of life to have those toxins inside our bodies. So um, those toxins are work against our life, against the expression of our life, against our body's ability to balance itself. Yeah. So that's why. As I've started learning about detoxifying, I've learned that there's many different ways to detoxify the body or different ways to support the body in detoxification. But, you know, Nicole Messia introduced to me um, a glutathione supplement back in April, I think it was. And, you know, I started learning about glutathione. I didn't even know what that word was at that time. <laughs> and um, I was like, glutathione, what? Like, how do you pronounce this? But, um, you know, as I started reading more about it, I realized from, from reading that it's a master detoxifier, especially of he heavy metals. Can you address that? Yeah, that's, it's a big problem, heavy metals in our environment, because these things tend to get concentrated in our environment. Mm -hmm. And to give you an example of, you know, people might be wondering, you know, what, what is a heavy metal? Well, uh, it's a broad classification. It includes many things. It could be arsenic, it could be tungsten, uh, it could be mercury, uh, it could be uh, even things that have some benefit in small amounts, things like chromium mm -hmm. uh, or things like this. Any any element that becomes excessive in our bodies uh, begins to wreak havoc because it's it's out of balance so especially these toxic elements like mercury is an example of that it's been it's been put into our teeth mm -hmm. you know the mercury amalgam fillings and so it's right there next to our brain mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it causes toxicity and the only thing that will pull mercury out of the brain is glutathione. Wow. But glutathione is the master antioxidant. It is the master detoxifier. And it has like a sticky aspect as a part of its chemistry that it, it latches onto these heavy metals and pulls them out into the bloodstream. And so the next phase of detox, as I mentioned, is activating the organ of detoxification. Now, fortunately, glutathione supports, and we can say that in the functional medicine arena, support cell function, especially noted because I've read the studies in liver, that's an organ of detoxification, kidney, an organ of detoxification, the bowel, it's very important for the, the, the lining of the bowel, glutathione is, um, lungs, skin, all of these things being supported by this very molecule this master molecule that is pulling the toxins out is also supporting the organs of detoxification so it's really the perfect one-two punch mm -hmm. i feel like i'm giving myself this major cleanse you know and it's funny that you were talking about the mercury in our teeth well i just had amalgam removed and i think that's what had caused my toothache um, because it was in that general area where the, the mercury was. And so I just feel so much better knowing that 
because I had that amalgam and mercury removed, I, I know that it's the way that it was removed was supposed to be like super high tech and, you know, get all the, the fragments, but you know, that's not possible. Oh. Um, so I just, I feel really good that I'm actually doing this for my body, that I'm giving my body this glutathione supplement. And I want to ask you this, why supplement with glutathione? Um, I'm choosing to supplement. Why, why do you think that's important? It's important because almost everyone is deficient in it. The most we'll ever have is when we're 20 years old. That's like that optimal place where your body functioning is at a high level. And then you lose it at the rate of 10 to 15% per decade. So literally every day of our lives we live, we have a little bit less of it. But here's, here's what's important to, to understand. There are things that deplete glutathione. Those include stress. How many people in the world today are stressed? Right. Those include environmental toxins. How many people with the 80,000 approved chemicals in, in our environment are exposed to environmental toxins? It includes um, even activity, like if you push yourself, even exercise. Exercise is healthy, but exercise causes glutathione to deplete. Not getting enough sleep causes depletion of glutathione. Having a chronic infection or chronic inflammation causes depletion of glutathione. Having certain deficiencies, like if you have a deficiency as an example of things like even magnesium, that can activate the GCL gene that helps us to create glutathione. And almost everyone, 90% of people are deficient in magnesium. So mm. even, even these deficiencies, selenium, magnesium, and, and others can cause depletion of glutathione. So because of all of this, mm -hmm. we all operate with less glutathione than we actually need. And at age 45, you drop off a cliff and you're age 47. So you begin yes. to see things... <laughs> You begin to see things going headed the wrong direction, in other words. At age 65, you know, it, it drops off another cliff. So that's why, you know, people hit 70, you really see aging setting in because your body has such so little amount of glutathione. And other things that it does is protects the mitochondrial DNA so that, so that you, your body can produce better energy. So you lose the ability to produce good energy. The telomeres, which is a critical part of our DNA strand, the, the vulnerable part at the ends, are protected by glutathione. So it prevents that rapid uh, deceleration, uh, the, the loss of the telomere, which causes aging. So it prevents these things. So literally, people that have adequate levels of glutathione live longer mm -hmm. and they live better. So it's really important that we actually supplement it because we don't have enough. <laughs> any of my friends watching know that my goal is to like live longer and look good while I'm doing it well, right I want to be exactly, vital of course. And healthy and youthful and everything so I of love course. this um, now you and I are taking a NutraSwish we're taking a glutathione supplement and can you just share a little bit about how that is actually made because I was reading a lot about how um, glutathione is very hard to absorb in the body is that true it's really difficult. The first study I ever I ever really uh, analyzed regarding glutathione was in 1985. I had heard about glutathione in in college as the one of the endogenous antioxidants, and that's about all I knew. And I knew that was important because the endogenous antioxidants are the most important, and glutathione reigned supreme. You also have catalase and superoxide dismutase, but glutathione was by far the one that you really categorize as the ultimate. In 1985, I read a study that when liver function was low, you needed to check glutathione because they corresponded. And low glutathione levels corresponded with low liver function. And we were seeing a lot of liver function issues related to many different health concerns because the liver has 500 known functions. Everything from sugar, to lipid, to enzymes, to hormones, to detoxification, uh, to immune support and all of this. So we, we wanted to upregulate glutathione, but it was very difficult to do because glutathione is a very fragile molecule. Mm -hmm. And if, if you take a supplement, because there have been supplements 
and you take that supplement, you didn't really see elevated glutathione levels because glutathione gets destroyed by stomach acids. There's a part of the molecule that's a sulfhydroxide element that breaks when it hits the hydrochloric acid of the stomach. So it doesn't, doesn't, it isn't taken in, in, in its full context and its full support. So we went to precursors and certain foods have been found to be precursors. In fact, there's uh, broccoli sprouts and radish sprouts, and there's other foods that have, you know, they're the high, the cruciferous vegetables, et cetera, can have aspects of themselves that can support our body's production of glutathione, but we never saw really significant support coming that translated. So you go down the years, you know, 10, a couple of decades later, then we realized that introducing the L-cysteine actually had some degree of support, especially if you can stabilize that sulfhydroxide component of the L-cysteine, because L-cysteine itself is destroyed by the stomach acid. But you can get a small amount through, possibly with an N-acetylcysteine, in so that if you take enough of it, it gets through. But that being noted, in the, in the cell, it has to go through a process. So you take the L-cysteine, the, the GCL gene has to be activated, mm -hmm. and, and that's just the first of the obstacles. There's another gene that has to be activated, and the GCL can be inhibited by mycotoxins, that's mold. So if someone's been exposed to mold, then that, that L-cysteine doesn't activate in that gene, so it doesn't go through to produce glutathione. Also a deficiency I mentioned of magnesium, a deficiency of manganese, a deficiency of selenium. All of these things people are, are, are deficient in, by, uh, generally in, in large numbers. 90% of people tend to be deficient in these trace minerals. So this L-cysteine sits there. What happens when it sits there without being utilized? It changes to cysteine, and cysteine changes to a sulfite which the body needs to get rid of because that's what's called a reactive nitrogen species, which is the oxidative agent, which is bad. So if you're trying to upregulate something that good like glutathione and you end up creating something bad, that, that happened. And people got worse, they got worse symptoms even because the body couldn't change that sulfite into sulfate and get rid of it because there's another gene that needs to be active, activated that requires molybdenum, and many people are deficient in molybdenum, and other trace minerals. So you see, the, L, the you don't have to remember all of that. That's a lot of gobbledygook to people. <laughs> but the important thing to understand is that's not a great mechanism. And just to understand how valuable this breakthrough is, that we can actually take glutathione into the body through the mucosa of the mouth. It's into the blood and into the cells in 70 seconds because of the size it's a nanotechnology that until this date hasn't been able to be achieved, this level of nano. They've tried it before, but they've used the wrong pathways and they've used liposomes and it ends up with too large of a molecule. So you end up with the same issues of it not getting into the cell and then having something the body has to break down and, and redistribute and get rid of. So now we, can, we have a dose appropriate, I like to call it, mechanism to get glutathione into the cell. Swish in the mouth, goes through the mucosa of the mouth, into the blood, and into the cells. And that is brilliant, and that's a breakthrough. It very much is. And like I said, I, I, had, an, I had a healing, I feel like, from taking the supplement. Um, but honestly, I feel better than I ever had. A friend of mine just messaged me two days ago and said, you look happier. And I am happier. I'm, I'm awesome. like, I feel like I have a zest for life right now. And um, this is an important factor to me. I, I have this goal of being the healthiest and happiest version of myself. And this is something that can support me in doing that and support my body in so many functions. I was reading before that um, glutathione is involved in over 400 functions of the body. It's, it's mind blowing what this molecule does for us. And I just really appreciate you, Dr. Jerry, you know, explaining detoxification more and blowing my mind. <laughs> um, you know, I've got the basics down right now, but you have taken it up a level and I just really appreciate your time today. Is there anything else that you want to add um, before we close out? Well, you mentioned 400 
functions of glutathione, but let's just take one of those functions supporting the liver, and that's 500 functions right there. And there's actually 3,000 uh, interactions of, of creating certain peptides that it's involved in or necessary for. And let's take another, just one of those functions being necessary for our body to be able to carry oxygen from the lungs to our tissues, without which we would die within a minute. So when you say 400 known functions, you take each of those functions, our entire life depends upon those functions. So wow. it really ends up multiplying it exponentially. <laughs> I just feel like, honestly, I, I've never said this about a product. I, I just never thought I could get so excited about a product, but it's not the product. It's the effects of the product. And I just, I'm so, so grateful. I'm just so grateful that I was open to receive this, that it was, it was that perfect alignment for me. And I'm getting chills, like talking about it because um, yeah. it is, it feels like the right thing to do for my body right now. And as you said, 47. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You discovered it at the perfect time. Let's just Thank say that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and I hope that um, those of you watching are discovering this at the perfect time too. It's all divine timing. Um, so, Dr. Jerry, thank you so much for sharing with me today. I have just this overwhelming abundance of um, gratitude for you and your wisdom. So thank you so much for sharing today. And if you all have any questions for me um, and then I can I can ask Dr. Jerry, we'd be happy to explore other questions that you might have. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. Thank you.